I know what you will be thinking. NANI? Right? But it's true. Maybe it's a little bit of a trickery. We are actually running Linux on an Android phone and using VNC server to connect to it. And so we have some kind of delay here while using using the desktop environment, but it's working and we have full-blown desktop apps. So in my opinion, that's the perfect companion for your iPad Pro. So let's -a go. So first let's install the software we will need. Search on your Android phone first for Andronix and press install. While it is installing, let's install Tamux. Uh, Tamux is like the command line we will use for installing. And while Tamux is installing and downloading, we will switch back to Tamux and take a look how we will install Android, right? So, Andronix um, gives you plenty of options for Linux distributions you could install. There are different versions, you can even pay for it and get a modded OS discounts and better support and many more things, but this isn't really needed for now. So let's install Ubuntu. You can install a modded OS. There you will have, they say, better performance and different uh, improvements over the regular OS, but as I didn't try it, maybe I will in the future. So let's install it. First you select a desktop environment. I will go here with LXDE. Now there will be a command copied, so we need to switch over to Termox. And in Termox we then can install the distribution. So let's quickly open it up. And first we need to do an update to all the installed software. Now we just paste the command and it will install the selected distribution and there will be some dialogues you have to answer. So now let's take a look how we can control the VNC server from the command line. First I will show you how you can actually stop the server. So you just type vnc server minus stop and then the port you want to kill. Next is how we can start the server with this command. You actually can set directly the resolution, but we don't want this because there's this UI in which we can select actually. So I think it's easier. And later on when we connect to the desktop environment there, you can set the resolution again. So now, Let's close Termox. For this, you need to go to your notifications and press exit and open it up again. Here, you won't be in your installed distribution anymore. So you can start it back up with this dot slash start minus Ubuntu 19.sh. And now you're back in distribution. You can see this because of the root add. So now I want to show you how you can uninstall your distribution. Just go back to Andronix, press uninstall, and then you will have a command in your copy buffer. When you close Termox again, um, you actually need to do this because you can't uninstall the distribution from the distribution itself. You have to go back to Termox and paste the command there. Now we will be setting up a hotspot on the Android phone so we can connect the iPad with the hotspot from the Android phone and then they are in the same network so we can use a VNC server from Andronix to connect the iPad and show the graphics. To open the hotspot you have to go to the settings of your Android device and there just search for hotspot because it changes from manufacturer to Android version to whatnot. I will not include it here because I guess it's more confusing than anything else. Just search for hotspot and then you will have a menu like here. Set it up like you like it. But maybe you are 
lucky and in the advanced tab you can enable the 5 gigahertz frequency and um, this will drastically increase your uh, bandwidth and with that you will have a far smoother uh, desktop experience. Now when the hotspot has been opened we have actually to find out the IP address of our host and for this we just have to type hostname minus capital I and then we will have the IP address. Now let's switch to the iPad and search in the App Store for VNC. There are plenty of options. VNC Viewer is a free one, just take this one if you don't really care. Otherwise I can recommend Jump Desktop. It's really, really good VNC, RDP and they even have their own um, remote desktop protocol. I can recommend it. Now switch to the settings and there connect to your hotspot. Now go back to the App Store and open the VNC Viewer. Here you see some instructions, just skip them and actually be sure to yeah, disable the metrics you want to capture. Now press the plus button in the right hand corner. Here add the IP address you have remembered or maybe not, then look, them, look it again up. And add a colon at the end and 5901 when you're just having one, one VNC server. Give it a name and press save. And now you can connect to your desktop. There will be an unencrypted connection warning, just ignore it. And now you have to enter the password you have entered when creating the Linux distribution. And ta da! Here is your Linux desktop with a command line. And yeah, just a full desktop. Because the iPad uses a 4x3 aspect ratio, you can see this black bar under the yeah, desktop. Um, we just go have to go to the uh, preferences and there to the LXQT settings and there are the monitor settings. Here we have to select one resolution which is 4x3 and then we will get rid of those nasty battles. So now let's install some software, open up a terminal and type in there sudo apt install blender. Now type blender and blender should open up. It will take some time because the yeah, VNC connection and maybe the Android phone is not the fastest one. But you have a fully functional blender here. Yeah, I guess it's really a success, even though it's not the smoothest experience. Let's try to install some code editing tool. Um, especially, I mean, Visual Studio Code. Here you have to enter this very long command. All the commands will be down in the description below, so don't worry, just copy them from there. So, now where it has been installed, um, yeah, you actually can start it directly from the command line without the minus minus user minus data minus steer argument. So, close down the shell and go to accessories and there code minus OSS had melted. And here you see a fully functional Visual Studio Code. Even though not every extension will be working out of the box, like the C++ extension, but many things actually will work, like the Python extension, so you can run full-blown Python IDE with debugger and linting on your Android or iPad. So that's already it. I hope you have learned something or find this tutorial useful. So see you in the next one.